Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter four talking about performance testing task and continuing ahead with the next segment of it that is 4.4, analyzing results and reporting. The most important thing to talk about at this point of time is of course we are done with preparing everything what you were supposed to and in fact you have also understood that what things need to be taken into considerations when it comes to execution. Now after execution, the most important part of performance testing is analyzing the results and creating the necessary reports because maybe everything is perfect up to the mark at this point of time. but when you start analyzing these outcomes, that plays an equal vital contribution to your overall performance success. It might not be really important or necessary that analysis will go well because you may have different inferences coming out of the analysis or maybe you may misunderstand the outcome of certain scenario executions and may say that, okay, the performance is good. At that time, the performance is not really good. So you wanna make sure that the analysis has certain protocols to be taken into account and considerations and you do capture them at the right point of time. Now that's where we'll be talking about how to analyze results and report it to the business stakeholders or technical stakeholders or whomsoever who is interested in that. We discussed the various matrices in a proposed uh, performance test plan. Defining these up front determines what must be measured for each test run. After completion of test cycle, data should be collected for defined matrices. So we know about matrices. I'm not gonna elaborate more. We have discussed this on previous tutorials and we will be just collecting all the details what these matrices have gathered during the execution and pull out the results from there. Now, when analyzing the data, it is first compared to the performance test objective that is this something which is relevant for our performance goal or not? Again, remember the selection of the matrix part? There we said that we select only the necessary matrices which are required to be captured at that point of time. Second, the matrices can be of different variant, but when we collate them together, multiple matrices must be joined to come up with a particular inference. Now that's where we are saying we need to first compare that it is as per the objective of the performance testing or not. Once the behavior is understood, conclusions can be drawn, which provide a meaningful summary report that includes recommendation actions based on the outcome. These actions may include changing physical components like hardware or router, changing software, which is like optimizing applications and database calls, and altering the network, which includes load balancing or routing. So could be anything as an outcome, which is like action items after the performance inferences. Or performance outcomes. So yeah, you will just define the recommendations and the required actions to be done based on the outcome of the analysis. Now there are following data which is typically analyzed. So of course understanding that what is that you can basically analyze during the analysis of performance test. Number one, status of simulated users. The needs to be examined first. That need of the number of virtual users working on that, how many of them actually fail, how many of them passed. There might be possibilities that you, when you run probably like 50 users simultaneously, only 30 of them succeeded to start working on that and 20 of them were failed or had some errors to simultaneously launch together. So filter that out and state that, okay, we could only start with 30 uh, users out of 50 and 20 were automatically failed initially itself, like during user init initialization action. Now we just reduce that particular thing from the outcome of the analysis. Because you cannot measure that, okay, this is the outcome of 50 users, not 30 users. Because 30 users could not participate in the execution. So the statistics, whatever you are looking at, is for 30 virtual users. So status does make a lot of sense when deriving the analysis and outcomes of performance test. Now it is normally expected that all the simulated users have been able to accomplish the task specified in the operational profile. Any interruption to this activity would mimic what an actual user may, may experience. This makes it very important to first see that all the user's activity is completed since any errors occurred may influence the other performance stadium. Now you know that this is how the different reasons are there which can influence the outcome of the performance test. 
On the second, we have transaction response time. The transaction response time is the most important thing which comes to somebody's mind when they talk about performance testing. And here we do definitely measure that was that within the given limit or threshold or was that above the given threshold. So this can be measured in multiple ways, including minimum, maximum, average and percentile. There are different ways to do it. And of course, you know the meaning of all these things that what's the minimum response time throughout the journey? What's the maximum? What's the average? And what's the 90th percentile of that? The minimum and maximum reading shows the extreme of the system performance. The average performance is not necessarily indicative of anything other than the mathematical average and can often be skewed by outliers. The 90th percentile is often used as a goal since it represents the majority of users attaining a specific performance threshold. It is not recommended to require 100% compliance with the performance objectives as the resource required may be too large and the net effect to the users will often be minor. Now that's where 90th percentile is something what we consider as a threshold to be seen that how many users can hit into that and then the outcome will be defined. Coming up next is we are talking about analyzing results in further detail with all other components including transaction per second which is throughput. So this provides information on how much work was done by the system during that entire timeline which you have executed. So throughput will be generally measured as the system throughput and it has definitely the number of transactions which are performed per unit time and that can derive uh, to see that what is the final activities or count of activities or you know, the throughput which is being performed by the system during that tenure or the time elapsed. Next is transaction failures. Not every time the V users fail. Sometimes a particular V user can have failures in the transactions due to availability of a resource, could be due to availability of the activity page, or maybe the objects during the runtime, or maybe networks. There are a number of reasons to say that. But yeah, this time we are talking about not the status of V user, we are talking about the transaction failure. Now the data is used when analyzing transactions per second. Failures indicate the expected event or process did not complete or did not execute at all. Any failures encountered are a cause for concern and the root cause must be investigated. Failed transaction may also result in invalid transactions per second data since a failed transaction will take far less time than a completed one because it was just failed so of course could not do the exact thing what it was supposed to and of course resulted in premature closure of that. The other one is hits per second, which is generally the request sent. So this provides a sense of number of hits to a server by the simulated users during each second of the test. Network throughput. This is usually measured by bits by time interval and as in bits per second also. This represents the amount of data the simulated user received from the server every second. So hits per second goes to the request and the network throughput is the response. And HTTP responses for each and every API execution is another parameter to be measured here. That is these are measured per second and include possible response codes such as 200, 302, 304, 404 and all those letter indicating that a page is not found. So there are different different way to do it and understand. Coming to the another part of this analysis, which includes the techniques which can be used for analyzing the results of the performance test. And here are various techniques which you can talk about. Comparing results to stated requirements, observing trends in the result, stat statistical quality control techniques, identifying errors, comparing expected with actual, comparing the result to prior test results, verifying proper functioning of components, and lot many other things. So these are some of the standard techniques by which you can actually derive your analysis and say that, okay, this is what the outcome is and come up with an inference, which includes very straightforward things here. If you see, we have uh, you know the comparison of the result to the stated requirement or quality control techniques from the statistic point of view that how precise and accurate you can be on deriving the outcomes. In fact, identifying the errors in the execution could also be a parameter to define the analysis and similarly the comparison of expected and actual result. So now identifying correlation between the matrices can help us understand that what what point system performance begins to degrade. 
Now correlation, of course, you remember from the script correlation as well, that sometimes it happens that you come across with some dynamic data, and of course that fails because the data was changed and the execution could not happen. Now you correlate it by using a correlation parameter. Same way the graphs and the charts can be correlated to identify that, okay, if we have a good comparison here and we see that what exactly could be the output of that, that at what point this degradation started. So correlation can very well tell you. For example, what number of transactions per second were processed when the CPU reached 90% of the capacity and the system slowed down, All right? That's a very good example to understand the analysis of the performance execution. Also, an analysis can help identify the root cause of performance degradation or failure, which definitely is the overall outcome of analysis, which in turn will facilitate the corrections or recommended actions. Confirmation testing will help determine if the corrective action addressed the root cause or not. So, of course, it's just generic things which do happen in performance testing, just like, you know, we do in a general testing process. We do take care of them here as well, like conducting a confirmation test, which is retesting. On the other hand, we try to make sure that uh, the root cause has been actually resolved, what was you decided from the analysis, and do take care of that tracking of those action items that is that all done or not. So that was to all talk about analyzing results as a part of this particular tutorial. So this is the part one. We'll be having part two to talk about the reporting of the performance test. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.